Hey everyone, welcome back to Mount and Blade Warband with the Nova Aetas mod. And today I want to show you a little bit of our town management as well as the village management. And we're finally going to make our way over to the new world and hopefully we'll be able to found our first colony. So yeah, um, that has been my plan for, yeah, basically three episodes ago, but obviously the whole crusade got kind of in the way. Um, however, I've decided that, um, well, before we uh, have a look at the uh, management, I want to go over um, my personal budget report here because that just came in and I kind of want to show you how much money I've been making. So uh, I uh, went to my blacksmith, picked up my tools that I need. We'll talk about this in a second. So now this one will make a little bit more money. Not sure why the tailor and carpenter are doing that bad, but you know, that's just the way it is. Um, we're getting a little bit of rents and tariffs, but as you can see, we're not actually getting the tax because the tax is going to unleash the post. Um, yeah, we're also making a little bit of rents from our villages, not all of them, whatever, that's fine. Then this is our residences that we're giving out. And then we're lo losing some money due to tax inefficiency, but yeah, that's just the way it is. Uh, also, our army is a little bit expensive in our uh, garrison. Our fleet is incredibly expensive, especially in comparison to the rest, but yeah, okay. Um, and then that, yeah, in total gives us 5,000, I think... Yeah, I think we've gotten a little bit more previously. I think we got in the last Kingdom budget, we got like 20,000. But yeah, I might, no, yeah, definitely, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, whatever. I'm not sure what changed that, that's okay. We're going to make our way in here. We're going to go into the castle and we'll talk to a guild master. But this is a different guild master than the one we're used to when visiting our guild halls. This one is actually right here in the castle and he is uh, going to tell us all about our town. So greetings and welcome to our wonderful town. I trust you are well. Of course I am. And uh, he's going to tell us a couple of details. So first of all, we have a population of 6,442 people. Not sure if that is a big town, but I assume it is. Uh, our treasury is actually quite high, 73,000. So we can definitely work with that. We also have a tax level. Okay, that's pretty good. Tax income, fine. Now the region is Islam, which makes sense because this has been in the hands of the Sarnite Sultanate for quite some time. But the religious uniformity is not very high. And the growth at 2%, okay. Now, I actually already talked to this guy a little bit. He can uh, tell us many things about, uh, this is actually just a balance of power. So as you can see, uh, our kingdom had a different uh, balance of power when we when we established the kingdom. The kingdom had a 60% a uh, or 60% strong nobility and a 30% strong clergy. And then, uh, yeah, and a 10% strong commoner. Now, commoners are now, uh, replaced with the craftsmen which have five percent and there's the also the bourgeoisie with ten percent which i said is you know the fourth power but that one does not come into play in uh, the kingdom only in uh, the towns so yeah once again we're gonna have to uh, kind of balance their power because each one of them gives certain bonuses um to your well town and yeah uh I guess the one that we're actually going to need right now is the clergy because we want to, um, well, bring that religious uniformity up. And first of all, we want to change the official religion of this town. Yes, and food. Oh, I see. So we cannot actually do that. I would obviously like to, um, well, change the religion to Christ uh, to Catholicism, but that's not possible right now as we lack religious uniformity. So we're going to have to get that up. Um, so, uh, basically here, once again, just like with the other counselors on the kingdom level, basically you can ask him all kinds of things about how to manage your town. I've read through this, but I will not do that on, on camera right now because that would be incredibly boring to do. If, as I said, if you want to do your own playthrough, then you should do that. I would highly recommend you guys do that as they explain a lot of things. But for now, I'm just going to, uh, well, hire some commissioners. Now, one thing I really like about this and I really like about the system that each kind of uh, town has their own, um, I guess, treasuries, is that I don't feel like, or I, I totally feel like um, spending, or I guess spending money to in increase the town, uh, administrating the town, makes sense. I don't, I no longer, you know, I guess I should explain this, in, in regular warband, I 
would never really want to spend money on a castle or town that I don't actually intend on keeping because I just feel like it's a waste of money. I usually just improve the castles that I really mean to hold, that I want to have as my main seat. Uh, but now I no longer have this restriction because the money is not my actual money, it's the money of the town anyways. So yeah, I really like this a lot. Anyway, uh, we're gonna uh, hire them, 10,000 out of the treasury, that's fine. We have about 70,000, so that should be fine. And we're gonna hire another commissioner, the commissioner of justice. I'm the mayor, I will, uh, I'm the mayor, I will deal with the consequences. Yes, there we go, and we still have 50,000 gold in there. So we're just gonna quickly have to get out and back into the castle, and now the commissioners should be here there they are great so the guildmaster we don't really not need to talk to him anymore but this guy is important so we can set a new tax level we currently have the average one um i think we're just gonna we're just gonna keep it at that for now uh that's 75 florins per week low woods um okay no wait Thirty-two thousand florins okay um that's fine. We can donate to the treasury. Uh, we can basically add our personal wealth. I won't do that as it's doing it's it's doing fine right now. And here is what we can do. We can gift money to um, certain well powers here, and that will make them stronger. So, for example, if we gift ten thousand florins to the clergy, they will increase or that power will increase by five, and that's important because uh, the clergy will help us with our religious uniformity. But I think there's a better way of doing this, and uh, that is actually edicts. So I actually want to proclaim a new edict, uh, edict that, um, well, costs basically no money and will still raise the uh, power of the clergy. So we could go ahead and prohibit other religions. That would incredibly increase the power of the clergy, but that's a little bit much, I think. I think we're going to make raise funds to make religious books cheaper. Order total freedom for the Inquisition. That seems a bit harsh as well. Increase tax levied by the clergy on the lower class. Institute severe punishment for heretics. I think we're just gonna go and raise funds to make religious books cheaper. I think that's that's a good start. We'll see how that goes. Um, in fact, actually that costs... Oh, it does cost money. 5,000 florins. Alright, I think we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. Um, raise the funds to make religious books, books cheaper. Yes. We're going to quickly check uh, what the balance of power is right now. So the bourgeoisie has 7%, craftsmen only 2 and the clergy has now 45 Almost the second, well, well, it's the second strongest, almost the strongest faction. Okay, I think, you know what, we're going to leave that for now and we'll see what that changes. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be changing anything more right now. It's going to be uh, quite a struggle to well, change the religion of our town, but that's something that needs to be done. Now, one thing I also want to show you is that I've been making quite some use of our, uh, tr well, chest here. I have um, made sure that we're no longer wearing our, um, well, crusader armor, as we're no longer on a crusade. I feel like it's not necessary to do that. If we happen to be at war with religious enemies at some point, then we will wear this again, but for now I think it's not important. I've also left a little bit of uh, well, drinks here, just, you know, in case of an emergency. I left a couple of other things here that I don't need on my quest. This is basically my trader's outfit, which I probably don't need at all anymore, since I'm now a lord. Um, so I, I guess I should be more shown, uh, or more seen in my regular clothing. In fact, this actually, this actually is a better armor than the one I have, but that's okay. Now, you will also see that I have a pistol here now, and this is actually something I meant to craft on my own, but then I found this um, in a tavern, and when I was looking for Serafina, my companion, I found a firearms merchant in, the, in uh, a tavern, and it only costs 900 gold, 900 florins. So I definitely picked it up because it was ridiculously cheap and uh, I used the bullets that I have crafted myself already and now we can use this. I will be showing that off as well. Now the things you can see in here um, are the things I picked up from my farm where I, uh, prior to the crusade, stored all my stuff. Um, and these things we will need in order to build up a colony. That's 10 stone, 5 tools which I got from my ironworks and then 15 timber pieces. We'll need that to set up a new colony, which is one of the things I want to do. I also think that it makes a lot of sense to uh, bring these things onto the new world because we never know what we might need. I don't know if we, I, I guess we probably won't need any of this when we go to the new world, but still, I feel like from a roleplay perspective, it would make sense to do this. 
Now, the Crusader Horse I have to keep because I cannot put it into the chest, which I guess kind of makes sense, but yeah. Uh, these two things I wanted to give to Serafina. The Holy Bible, obviously, we need to bring as the uh, Grand Maester of the Holy Sepulchre. I think we should have that. And this, I simply don't really know what to do with it. I guess for now, I, I guess I could... Ah, fine. Well, I'm just going to keep it here for now. It's okay. It doesn't really harm anyone. Okay, so that's that. Um, and I think we're going to leave now. And I did show you a little bit of the town management, especially what, uh, well, concerning the religion. But there's another option you have, and that is going through this window. And so apparently, uh, Hero Solima is a stage four town. Not sure what that means. We could actually destroy things. Interesting. Um, so yeah, we have, it shows our treasury once again, our income, um, population, and all these kind of things. Uh, that we've already seen anything else town news there are none they're none there and then it also shows kind of the buildings that we have which is very interesting so let's quickly check the overview that's where we are right now details okay so that shows this again basically the information we get from the uh, clergy and then we also have some growth factors so we have a total growth of two percent that's okay i think um balance of power effects the clergy um is greater than 25 plus 2% conversion. So if we were to get them um, up another 5%, they're at 45 right now, we would get an extra 3% conversion. I, I think that that's something we might actually want to do. Yes, so you're greater than 40, proclaimable edicts, few days, okay. Mm, no extra recruits, that's fine. Bourgeoisie giving building cost right now no extra income okay we can get extra income from them so the commoners provide growth the bourgeoisie income um the nobility recruits and the clergy provides conversion and since that's something we want to do first i think we want to improve them we'll do that um yeah okay let's have a quick look at construction though so i'm not sure if this is a large city this has been constructed i believe okay training barracks training the troops okay Okay, can I build this? Hmm. Raps stables. That's significant improvement over basic setup. In addition to housing and entourage of mounts, extra building accompany the stable. Blah 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 blah. Uh okay, not too sure. Fairground, that provides income. Okay. Prestige. And 36 hours siege holdout. A stone wall. That might actually be important. A palace. New castle scene. Okay, we can also get roads, gravel roads, open pit quarry, income per week. Oh wow, that's a lot of income. That costs 23,000 fluents, but that's, that's going to pay off in 10 weeks. That seems like a really good idea. What else do we have? Irrigation networks, income and growth. Okay, then archery range, it doesn't really do much. Oriental, Bermaristan, uh, growth. Okay, what else do we have? As Waff School. Well, that is probably tied to religion, so I wouldn't want to buy that. A chapel. With devotion to God prevalent in medieval times, even the smallest of churches are an important building in the community's day grace. Though relatively humble by Christian standards, small churches are still well built and are typically one of the most impressive buildings in their lo locale. Um, I feel like we should do that because we want to convert, it's going to give us piety and prestige. But that's very expensive. That's basically all the money we have. Hmm, all right, you know what? In that case, I think we're gonna start off with the quarry because that's gonna provide us a little bit more income. I think we're gonna go for this first. Build this, yes. So we have 25 left. Anything else we can build? Maybe these roads, but they're, yeah, they're very expensive. Um, any, there was any, this, 13, fairground, another income. I think we wanna go with this as well. Build this, yes. What can we recruit? We can recruit a papal pikeman. I see. Okay, how much are they going to cost? 6,010 papal pikemen. Also papal crossbowmen, papal lances, Geronian guard. Uh, I actually picked up a couple Geronian guards from a tavern as my personal guard right now. Um, papal swordsmen. I think we're probably going to go with a little bit of Geronian guard. We don't have enough money for that. Um... All right, fine. I think we're not going to train. Oh, will we train some? I would like to see. 
I guess we can five thousand. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I I don't think we're gonna do that just yet. We don't really have the money. I've been spending the money on other things. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll not do that. Okay, can I? How can I get back? Quit. There we go. Okay. So let's quickly head back into the castle and uh, try and raise the uh, the uh, the clergy once again. So gifts. Let's give ten thousand florins to the clergy. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And um, so now we only have a thousand left. Yeah, we've spent basically everything, but that now means we have the clergy at fifty. So that gives plus five conversion. Yes, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Sweet. Um, and that was that was it. I think that was all I wanted to do. Garrison is looking fine, I believe. We have a Jeronian guard, as I said, and. I think we can head out. Yes, a lot of things to do, obviously, but I think we can head out. And now before we go ahead and cross the sea, obviously as a good administrator that I am, right, superb even, I think we need to make sure that everything is set up properly. So we're going to have a look at our villages as well, because they can be managed too. Unfortunately, I still have the wrong icon on my uh on my thing here it still shows that i am not on a horse but yeah hopefully that will change at some point anyway um i guess we're gonna speak with the village elder i i, I guess that's where we can uh, change the uh village not too sure i want to manage my village yes so all of these things are regular things so this is the new feature um i want to place a new I want to place new buildings. Okay, so, um, of course, my lord, your settlement has 42 villages and grew with one village villager last week. Your village treasury consists of 12,000 florins. Okay. Uh, assign jobs to the villagers. Set a new tax level. Um, okay, average is what we have right now, I think. Uh, each level high average makes one extra person leave the village. Okay, I think average is fine for now, yes and um, get me to the treasury so demand my salary oh i see okay i don't think i will do that uh information about the village oh i see okay so there's a couple things i need to read first okay now i'm gonna quickly read them and i'll come back once i know more so i'll see you guys in a second all right guys so i have been uh, reading through all of the things that this village elder had to tell me and yeah that's uh, pretty interesting so first of all the max amount of people you can have in a village is 80 and they grow well just like they do in real life by having a surplus of food so um you can assign jobs to your villagers and there's four jobs you can have you have farmers Woodcutters, stonecutters, blacksmith. So woodcutters provide wood, stonecutters stone, and blacksmith tools. All of these things you need, uh, all of the three things you need in order to construct things in your village. And the farmers are basically just there for food. So you need, uh, basically one farmer produces two units of food. So for the 42 uh, people that we have right now, we would have the need of 21 farmers to keep it stable but the more farmers you have the more people will move in um, because they had then you then have a surplus of food so yeah at, at max you need 40 farmers when you have 80 people in your village so yeah uh, I guess we're gonna assign um, maybe tw well 20 farmers 21 is necessary so that nobody moves out um, I think so yeah this is necessary um, and we have 21 people left, but I think I think we're gonna go up to 30 farmers because that means we'll have well, Actually, that's not uh, no no remove remove 10 farmers. I think Yeah, 20 25 farmers. I think is perfect Let's go with 25 farmers for now. That's okay. Uh, then we want to have uh, a woodcutter we have 17 unemployed, so I think maybe two blacksmiths would be good, and maybe uh, 10 woodcutters and five stonecutters. 
Yes, that I think that works quite well. So 20 of farmers. Okay, that's it that seems uh, pretty reasonable And um, now we could also go ahead and build something now a mosque uh, Obviously first of all, it's way too expensive and secondly, I don't want to uh, build a mosque of course not But an equestrian statue of maybe myself that would be interesting um, So if you want to have a prestigious village, you should pick this option Prestige plus 90. Creating this would require several phases. First, your people will build up the construction site. Then the construction phase begins. In this phase, you need to order the peasants via the drafting table to bring resources to the site. Um, okay, you know what? Um, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to start building something just yet because I want to go to the new world and I won't be able to here to, to do much. So I think for now, just assigning them to their jobs is fine. And we'll let them collect a little bit of resource and once we're back we're actually gonna start constructing something so yeah I will assign um, jobs to my villages uh, at least in Kana Sukkot will probably not be possible and once I have done that I will come right back uh, actually you don't know maybe I, I, I will show you that maybe I'll show that it won't take that long we still do not actually have a horse which is very annoying to me but oh well uh, so yeah speak to the village elder once again I guess we could also recruit some volunteers in fact I might want to do that Yes, I want to manage this village. This actually has, oh, okay. We only have 28 villages and grew with minus two last week. That's interesting. That must be the tax level then. I guess we're gonna go with average. Um, uh, okay, so assign jobs to the villages. We need 10 farmers, we need 14 farmers. But I think if we go, if we go with 20 farmers, that's gonna help a lot, but then, no. Well, we need 24, as I said, uh, 14, I should say. So, you know what, let's just go with, yeah, let's just go with 20 farmers for now, that's okay. And we have eight more people we can go for, so I guess two or three of you, three of you, and two blacksmiths. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Now we'll just go over this, and we only have 9,000, so I guess we cannot... Oh, we can build many more things here. Ah, I see. So maybe the other village is just much better. It has towers, stone walls, messenger posts, and all these kind of things already. So I guess that's why it's doing better. But yeah, right now, I guess we can build a messenger post. Uh, what's that do? Um, okay, let's give it a little bit of prestige. No. What would the stockpile do? Prestige. They all give prestige. Um, stone walls increases time with 50 okay um, what would a mosque do by the way prestige okay yeah uh, I think once again we're not actually going to uh, build anything here as that would well require a lot of attention and as I said we're not gonna be here for a while okay the Sarnites uh, declare war on the Turgons that's good so they're gonna be distracted and I do believe we won't be able to do anything here yes okay that's very unfortunate but we're gonna have to make our way over here and we'll have to uh, use our ships now I did not disembark this time we're actually now that we're at peace again we can use the dock here and set sail yes now before we actually make our way to the new world I think I want to start by fully exploring the Mithridian Empire over here, which is a very mysterious empire. And look at this. Once again, we're not shown in the uh, in the ships. That's very strange. I don't know why that is, but yeah. Okay, that's a little bit annoying. So yeah, we're going to explore a little bit. Uh, as you can see, a couple of lords are stuck. Now, I've seen that several times. I've seen that happen several times, that lords get stuck on these islands. That's uh, obviously a little bit, bit of a shame, but uh, yeah, okay. Not much we can do about that. Right? Uh, okay, so we've discovered a little bit of these ports here. Sweet. But there's even others. Look at this. Swadia's here. The Rodox. Ah, man. That really sucks that they're all getting stuck here. Corinthus. Yeah, that really sounds like the Greek cities. Ephesa. I wonder if we can go in here. Oh, yeah, we can. Sweet. But uh, apparently there's uh, Idiria's army. He's just there. There's some looters and deserters. Okay, he's just chilling there. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. And we'll go outside, I think. And just that was basically no, that wasn't it. There's that capital. Look at this. That is just incredibly amazing. This looks like. Uh, is that is that? Oh my god, I'm I'm doing it. It's from uh, Lord of the Rings, but I'm not sure what that castle is actually called. The White City. 
but I don't remember what it was called. But yeah, that's amazing. And I've also read that this will have a just tremendously amazing siege scene. So we probably need to go to war with them at some point just because I want to see uh, what the city looks like. But yeah, I, I, I believe we have now discovered basically everything of the Mithridian Empire. Maybe there's a little bit left, but that's, yeah, probably not too important. We're now going to head over to Zendar um, because... Oh, what's this? The Mithridian Empire is a remnant of the old Calradic Empire, having its roots deep in history. The Empire has lost much of the land that once belonged to the Purple Crown. Once the southern islands of Calradia are spared... Oh, oh, only. Okay, I see. In order to preserve their, na their own nation and culture, the Mithridians have decided to keep the affairs of other countries at a far distance. In fact, every outsider is prohibited by the four centuries old law to enter the Mithridian lands, docks and beaches. Breaking such law will cause war. Okay, well, I don't... What the, okay, okay, so apparently... Huh, when clicking to go over there, I accidentally tried to land on their shores, which obviously I did not want to do, yeah. So we're gonna make our way over to Zenda because our lady has been uh, calling for us. So we're gonna visit her and I'll try one more time to check the taverns and see if maybe we can find um, Serafina because obviously uh, I would like to bring her with us into, uh, well, into the new world, but we'll have to see. So uh, first of all, let's visit the tavern and see if we can find our companion. That would be really cool, but no, it does not seem to be the case. There's this firearms that I've been uh, telling you about. This is the one who sold me my, uh, well, my pistols. Yeah, it was 900 uh, gold. We can obviously buy some more bullets, but I did have the bullets before, so I did not need them. Uh, okay, but yeah, um, if that's still the same, then that obviously means Serafina is not here. So in that case, I'm going to attempt and visit our lady. Yes. And we're gonna just say, well, first of all, we're gonna have to uh, tell her that uh, we've successfully returned from our crusade against the Sarnat Sultanate. We are now a lord, and uh, perhaps we are now more worthy of her, uh, of her, well, I guess, her hand, I, I, I guess. But yeah, also, I, I would like to say that, um, sweet lady Arena, I'm going to be going on to the new world. And uh, I, I'm not sure when I can return, so we may not see ourselves, well, see ourselves, see each other for quite a while. So I guess, you know what, do you think we have a future together? Mm, I've been entertaining offers from a number of gentlemen, such as yourself. I am not yet at a stage where I can commit to any of them. <gasps> okay. Um, so I could go ahead and duel this again, but yeah, I don't think I want to duel another person just yet because obviously we want to get, we want to go somewhere else. Uh, so one last thing we need to do is go to visit a local church and I think we'll have a little bit of a chat with, um, well, with, uh, what's his name? The priest? Is that a priest? Yeah, I think it's a priest. We're going to pray real quick just so that we have a safe passage onto the new world, um, and uh, yes, I want to pray, yes. I do not want to make a donation just yet, but yeah, we'll they do all the Latin stuff. Yes, okay, uh, amen. There you go, we have more piety. And now, I think it's time that we leave. I've been, uh, I've been talking about it for so long. Let's finally set sail for the new world. There we go, yes, perfect. All right, so we're gonna go from Zenda, and I think the closest, Islands. I think we should go for the closest islands first. So there we go. And yeah, that's going to be very interesting. And now, oh my God, look at this. Look at this. This is the new world that we have heard about from the Zendarian merchants. And it's quite, quite far. Look what we are leaving behind. Yes. And there are the Holy Lands. You can see our city all the way over there. But no. We are now obviously focusing on the new things. Glorious, glorious new world. And I hope that we can actually start by setting up a colony immediately. But yeah, we'll have to see. I've not, I've only read about it. So I don't know what, how it's actually done. So I c apparently cannot get on this one. Okay, so you can only go on to the ones with the beach. Okay. Um, Isle of Pandum. Okay. Uh, Coates Island, 
That's an interesting name. Um, I guess we're just going to explore a little. Island of Nova. And then... What's this? Island of Zenja. Okay, we'll uh, discover a little more. But you know what? I think... Um, I think we're probably just going to go for the island. I like the island of Nova. That sounds like a Santiago. Santiago. That sounds good as well. Let's try this one. Let's see what that is all about. Uh... Is there anything else we can discover? Probably not. Yeah, we're just gonna have to go to the beach. Jungle. There's jungle here. And what's this? Tla oh, so this is the Aztec faction. Those are the natives. That's really interesting. Okay, can we uh, can we just land here? Ictesepi. You arrive at the port of Ictesepi. Land here. Yes. Okay, so this seems to be the Az... Az... Aztec Empire. Okay. Where am I? Oh, I'm here. Over here. Okay. Can I visit... Okay, so the town of Itzepexi, you can go to the hall and have a look around. Okay, okay, wow, look at this. This is the prison guard, okay. Yeah, I he looks very interesting. Two prison guards. Mm-hmm. Fire in the center. It does look very exotic, indeed. Oh my god, that is, that is crazy. Very exotic indeed. Let's see what they have. Uh, take a walk around the streets. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is cool. That is really cool. And there's even a temple over there. Well, guys, you know what? Oh, wow, look at the moon. Wow. Cool. Really cool. But, you know, I think we're going to need a little bit more time to explore all of these things. So we have finally made our way to the New World. We have even found the Aztec Empire, or the Aztec Empire, whatever. Um... But yeah, as I said, we'll need a little bit more time to explore this. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching uh, so far. We have uh, talked about a lo lot of things today. We have managed our town as well as a lot of our villages. But I think now it is uh, time that we end this episode. So yeah, once again, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.